Hi everybody, Roy Shrov again. Um, in previous videos we talked about uh, relating to builds, we talked about um, artifact dependencies. Today we're going to talk about snapshot dependencies and, and how that's going to help you win life at work. Because one of the biggest problems, especially when working with other people, first of all, other people are a problem. I realize that. But also, they keep creating their own versions of their own components. Um, and we're going to talk about how we can solve that problem with snapshot dependencies. So what is this problem? Let's say that you're working on awesome component number two, but your component depends on component one and component four and component three. And also component four depends on component three. Awesome. Uh, what do you do? Well, in the build, you could, of course, do what we talked about before and just get the artifacts, um, compile those components and get the artifacts from those components into component two, right? That's what we would do. Get the artifacts from component three into component four so that it can build, then get component four artifacts into component two so that can build, etc., etc. All great, really. Some of my best friends do that. However, there could be some problems. Let's imagine what would happen. Um, where do we get the artifacts from? Artifacts are only gotten when a build is successful. And by default, when we get artifacts, especially in products like TeamCity, uh, we get them from the last successful build. Unfortunately, last successful build could mean that we might have versioning issues between the components. Here's a simple example. In this case, component 2 is already at version 103. We want to compile it, we want to get the artifacts from component 1, which we depend on. Unfortunately, component 1's team has been kind of disrespectful towards code quality, or you know what, it's just something horrible has happened, product owner, uh, whatever, someone spilled some coffee on the source control, I don't know. Anyway, their build has not been working for the last two weeks, so their product is still, their component is still at version 101. So when we get the artifacts, we get an older version of component 1 to build with component 2. Now, of course, that could create a big problem, is that we might only recognize this problem during uh, deployment. Um, so what we would like to do instead is to realize uh, that there is a versioning issue or maybe to avoid a versioning issue in the first place. Here's another simple example. Component 4. Maybe that one has only been working for the last week uh, but the newest build 103 has failed so we're gonna get version 102 into our component. And component 4 has its own dependency so j just look at this. Component 4 depends on component 3 and component 3 actually has a newer version than 103. It's actually working on new APIs which are on version 104 uh, but we're getting 103 which is the, the last successful one. So we won't know that we're uh, we're uh, working with new APIs until that build finally succeeds and then it will be uh, a lot more time until we get feedback. Uh, we might be working as an older version uh, not knowing that we should be getting a, f a newer one. Um, so we might end up with a deployment time with component 1, version 102, and the other components, version 1, 2, and 3, and that's just hell, just recognizing all that and testing all the components with those specific versions. That's really, really complicated. And this is where snapshot dependencies come to our rescue. You see, instead of just having artifact dependencies, which is one kind, we can actually do two kinds of dependencies. We can have artifact dependencies, but also set a snapshot dependency, which is kind of like tagging something and saying, I always want to have the latest version. So if I don't, recompile that something. And if it fails, don't let me run. In this case, what this means is that snapshot dependency means that we will always have the exact same version between all the components. It will force the build on components that are in an older version will actually fail our build if they don't succeed. In this case, component 1, if we had a snapshot dependency on it, our build would of component 2 would actually fail because component 1 uh, 
fails our build and the CI server, in this case SteamCity, recognizes that a snapshot dependency has failed to build and then component 2 will actually stop from building. So we cannot integrate these two components until their versions are exactly the same. And when I say versions, I mean that the source control tag, the source control version, uh, the specific check-in version is the same. If the source is different, then those builds will fail and component 2 can never succeed until component 1 succeeds. Same with component 4. If that fails, component 2 fails. What if component 3 fails? It actually will affect component 2 as well. You see, in this case, component 3 failed to build 104, which consequently failed component 4. Even if component 4, to the right here, would have succeeded, its snapshot dependency failed, has failed, and then its own build will never actually run, meaning that component 2, the, the full component on the left, will never actually compile and will never actually build because component 3, they're both waiting for component 3 in this case. Um, so even if you have a small sub-dependency of a dependency, it can break the, it can break the build. Uh, so when you have a component that depends on other components, snapshot dependencies are a good way to make sure that every one of those dependencies is in check. When they're all in check, we're going to get a successful version. They don't all have to be, they, they all just have to be in the latest version of the source code. Uh, they do not have to be the exact same version of the binary. We could have more check-ins in some component than others. But as long as the latest specific version of that component is what we have, then the build should and the build succeeds, then the component 2 build will actually succeed. And of course, if, if the builds have succeeded, there's no reason to rerun them. So when, uh, if component 4 has succeeded and there were no check-ins uh, when we move to a new version, component 4 will not be built. We'll just reuse the existing artifacts and that saves a lot of time. Working snapshots are skipped. If the, if the code is in the latest version and the, the previous build has succeeded, then there will be no extra build so we don't really have to build all the components, just the ones that have changed. So that's about the team. We can also use snapshot dependencies based on the structure that I showed you in previous videos. In this case, if you remember, we had CI and deploy to test, deploy to staging. I can use a snapshot dependency. I can set a snapshot dependency from prod to staging and between staging to test and between test to CI so that when I run deploy to prod, it will actually trigger CI and then test and then staging in the right order. And if CI is already run, it will deploy to test and staging before that. So I can have a one click full deployment operation that just based on the snapshot dependencies will trigger everything in the right order. And because I get the artifacts, because I have both dependencies, then not only do I make sure they're the same version, I also get the artifacts and I reuse them so that I have a cumulative build. So that's it about snapshot dependencies. This is one of the coolest things that almost nobody knows about, except those uh, with um, that have all that have had those problems for a long time and finally found out about this. So this is something, for example, that doesn't exist in TFS. TFS, I think, is like three, four years ahead of uh, back. Uh, where it should be. Uh, Team CD does support this. I'm not sure what other tools support this, but I would love to hear your comments about this. So, till next time, cheers.